We said once upon a time that gravity, that is uh, acceleration due to gravity, or some people actually don't refer to acceleration due to gravity at all, but they talk about the strength of the gravitational field intensity. You know, gravitational, the gravitational field can have different strengths depending on how far you are away from something. Um, Earth, for example. We said before that the gravitational field intensity, or g with an arrow, absolute values, or acceleration subscript g with absolute values, is 9.81 meters per second squared. Um, that could be in units of meters per second squared, or really newtons per, per kilogram. So I want to take a look at the gravitational field intensities at uh, five different locations around our planet. I want to take a look at the equator, which has a latitude of zero degrees. <clears throat> We'll take a look at the North Pole, which has a latitude of 90 degrees. And of course, people that remember their, their uh, grade, what grade do you do geography of this sort of latitudes and altitudes and stuff? Grade 9? Grade 8? Yeah. 9? Okay. But if you remember back to then, maybe even earlier, depending on what school you went to, um, you might remember that the Earth is kind of a ball. And we measure all these latitudes relative to the equator. So, of course, the North Pole is at 90 degrees latitude because if I take a side view of the Earth, the line connecting the center of mass of the Earth to the geographic North Pole is 90 degrees relative to the equator. Yeah? Makes sense. And then if we're going to pick on Toronto next, that angle there is about 44 degrees if I do a side view of the Earth. If we're going to go to Brussels, turns out that it's about 51 degrees. That's what latitude is, just to make sure that everybody is on the same page here in case you forgot your geography lessons. And Denver is at about 40 degrees. Okay, so these numbers are approximate because I got them off the internet and I don't totally trust my wiki answers or wherever it was that I went. But they're, they're close. In any case, the equator is at an altitude, and I should say in meters, Roughly, we're going to see the equator is at an altitude of zero meters relative to sea level. Relative to sea level, that's what we're going to measure our altitudes in because it's a reasonable thing to measure with respect to. Uh, it's the North Pole, also approximately zero. <coughs> Toronto, 162 meters. Um, Brussels, not far off of Toronto, a little bit lower, 102 meters. But Denver being in uh, which Rocky Mountain, oh, I gave it away. Which mountain range is Denver in? Yeah. Is it? What mountain range? Come on. Help a fella out. Yeah, Denver, Colorado. What's the name of the mountains? Anybody remember? About the Appalachians. All right. Well, anyways, we're, we're, isn't it the Rockies? Yeah, my geography isn't that good. You guys just took geography. All right. In the Rocky Mountains, we're sitting at around 1,638 meters. Experimentally, people went around dropping stuff for some time, and we could use ticker tapes, we could use motion sensors, we could use a lot of stuff to do this. Some sort of a motion graph could be, could be developed, though we could find tangents and slopes and all this other stuff. And what people have sort of figured out is that the acceleration due to gravity, or the gravitational field intensity, is about 9.781 at the equator. It's about 9.832 at the North Pole, and then in between we've got 9.805 in Toronto, 9.805 in Toronto, uh, 9.811 in Brussels, and it dips all the way down to 9.796 in Denver. <clears throat> okay? Now I want to do a, take a, a moment and just graph this, a very simple graph, and so your graph can be as simple as mine, but I'd like to put a vertical axis you know, a couple of squigglies here. We generally stay away from the squigglies where we can, but just to show that there's a discontinuity in the axis. And a horizontal axis. <coughs> the horizontal axis, I want to have 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90 degrees latitude. So it's going to be the latitude axis. And I suppose we could say that it's in degrees. I'm not sure if that's quite right for units, but it's in degrees latitude. Uh, on the vertical axis, though, 
We're going to have gravitational field in intensity, that is G. You know, people talk about how many Gs they're experiencing when they do roller coasters and things. Gravitational field intensity or acceleration due to gravity. So the G's axis is going to be in meters per second squared or in newtons per kilogram because unit-wise they're equivalent. <clears throat> Typically when people are talking about gravitational field intensity though, they'll talk about how many newtons are felt per kilogram, per kilogram of substance though. So this is the preferred units typically for gravitational field intensity as opposed to just acceleration. Just make a note of that. Um, on the vertical axis though, we're going to start at 9.75. They're equivalent, but one's preferred for gravitational field intensity as opposed to acceleration, which have the same units, but you know, just to emphasize different things. 9.80 and 9.85. And it's a little bit of a Mickey Mouse graph, not that detailed. But at zero degrees, we're going to be about 9.78. So somewhere around here. At 90 degrees, we're sitting up at 9.832. So somewhere further up here. At 44 degrees around Toronto, we're going to be at about 9.805. So I'm just approximating. And at 40 degrees, we're going to be at 9.796. And then when we get to Brussels, oh sorry, when we get to Brussels, we're going to be about at 9.811. <clears throat> and we could do a line of best fit. <clears throat> what color to use? So many colors. It's like a rainbow of physics. So I'm not going to claim that this is a perfect line of best fit, but it's not bad. No computers or anything, just done by hand. If I wanted to claim that there was some sort of a trend in the correlation between uh, latitude and gravitational field intensity, what do you think I might claim? What's the trend? You know, the, these, these correlation um, descriptions usually go uh, along the lines, as such and such changes, such and such uh, other thing changes. So wh what's the correlation here? As what changes, what other thing changes? As one increases or one, in one decreases, what other thing changes? Yeah? As latitude increases, gravitation increases. That sounds reasonable based on the data that we have at hand. So we might make the statement, as latitude increases, we observed that gravitational field intensity also increases. Gravitational field intensity, or G, oops, absolute, values increases. <clears throat> um, there's got to be a reason for that. I mean, this is recognizing the pattern, but science often doesn't want to just look at the, what the pattern is. We want to predict what the pattern is going to continue to be, uh, but also we want to know what the mechanism by which this pattern uh, develops is, is sort of, uh, what, what mechanism causes this pattern, is what I mean to say. What's the mechanism that causes this pattern? Um, to get at that, though, we kind of have to talk about the shape of the Earth. Does anybody know about the shape of our planet? Like, are we a perfect sphere? Our planet, that is? Yeah? It's kind of like squished in as it rotates. Yeah, it's kind of squished in. And a, a good way to talk about why that might happen would be uh, to talk about, you know, if you can picture like a basketball player spinning a ball. What if the ball isn't a basketball anymore? What if it's made out of jello? Can you imagine that along the equator it's going to bulge? Same thing happens with our planet. As it spins on its axis, it bulges. Because whether we realize it or not, we've got lots of liquidy type stuff under our feet. We've got magma. We've got uh, water. We've got all this stuff that over time has bulged in the middle, much like a jello basketball. Okay, So we, we say that it has a shape, actually very much like the way I drew it here. It's kind of a squished sphere. Yeah, you're right. You, I heard the word. Oblate spheroidal. So we've got an... Jacob said it, an oblate spheroid. 
<laughs> We've got an oblate spheroid here. That's what, what our planet's shape is. And so you can sort of see that if I'm at the equator over here, I'm further from the center of Earth's mass than, I'm, than if I'm at the North Pole. Is that clear? If I'm at the equator, I'm further from the center of Earth than if I stand at the North Pole because of the fact that the Earth is an oblate spheroid. And so let's see if that matches over here. At the equator, at uh, zero, I have really low gravity, well, comparably low. Does that make sense? I'm further from the, the center of the Earth's mass, lower gravity. When I get up to the North Pole, comparably higher gravity because I'm closer to the center of the Earth. And then there's sort of a dip. Why is there a dip there? Denver is raised up on a mountain range, which means that it's can, you, can you say it a little louder? Denver is raised up on a mountain range. Yeah. Which means that its height from sea level is increased in comparison to others around it. Yeah, so if I, I'm, I've overemphasized it here, but if I put Denver on top of that mountain that I just drew there on the side of my oblate spheroid, and I put it on top of the mountain, Obviously, this is over-exaggerated, but it's further away from the center of the Earth than something that's at a comparable latitude, but maybe not on top of a mountain. And so you get a little bit of a dip in the gravitational field intensity, and there's always people that say, oh, it's no fair that you did the Olympics on the top of a mountain or, you know, on some plateau. You're able to jump farther because gravity is lower and blah, blah, blah. Uh, and then people say, oh, that's not quite true because your lung capacity is, is only such and such and your oxygen processing levels are only such and such, so the, the air is a little bit rarefied on top of the mountain. So you didn't have as good oxygen supply, so your athleticism is going to be, you know, of a lower quality or something. Well, hey... Suck it up, buttercup. Whatever it is, the gravity is a little bit lower. The auction levels are a little bit lower. Maybe it all works out. Maybe it doesn't. It's a game. It's only the Olympics. You know, people, and people are going to try and, and uh, work their way around these kinds of things. And they'll make strategies around maybe their elevation in terms of oxygen levels versus gravity and whatever. But maybe gravity doesn't make that big of a difference. I mean, we could do the math and figure out. But maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. In any case... The reason for this trend could be summed up by just saying that the shape of the Earth influences how far you are away from the center of the Earth. So let's put it in writing, okay? The shape of the Earth <clears throat> I should say capital E for Earth uh, the shape. <laughs> I'm glad it's Monday. The shape of the earth <laughs> determines the shape of the shape of. The sherm de determines how close one is to the center of Earth's mass. And I'm going to short, short form that as C of M, because center of mass gets used enough. Center of mass. If you prefer to write it out in full, you can. C of M of Earth. <clears throat> this relates to the gravitational field intensity. Okay? So whether it's because you're on top of a mountain or because of the Earth's overall general shape, you're going to find yourself at different distances away from the center of the Earth. And so we have different gravitational field intensities. Now for our course, we use approximately this value because it's near where we live. If you lived in other places around the world, you might use slightly different values just to get significant digits for word problems and things like that. Uh, but the fact is, this is not a magic number. Acceleration to gravity, as we talk about it in this context, it depends on where you live. Okay, so I just want to make sure that's very clear. <clears throat>